A year or so ago, I made a little tomahawk out of a railroad spike, and I commented at the time that I thought that was more of a novelty item and not something I'd make for a serious axe. There were a lot of comments in that video about the possibility of forge welding in a higher carbon cutting bit to make it a better axe. And I'll talk a little bit at the end of the video on why that's not something I typically do, but let's go ahead and take a look at what that process might look like as well as doing a few other things that might make this a nicer axe overall. So I'm gonna make the best axe I can, starting with the railroad spike as my primary material. And to do that, the first thing I wanna do is fold the spike over, forge weld it back to itself to make a bigger piece of material and get a much larger, more substantial eye out of it. Then we'll worry about the blade end. I'm going to see if we can do most of this in the induction forge, just to get more experience forge welding in the induction forge. Although I think when the eye starts to swell, I may have to figure something else out. The taco coil is just a bit overkill, plus it's real tight on the top and bottom. So I'm going to switch to a round coil, and I think that'll make for better heat while we forge weld this. I let this cool after welding so I can lay it out nice and evenly. Then I'm going to go ahead and drill a couple of holes at either end of where I'm going to punch the eye. This really helps guide the punch, provides a path of least resistance, and helps guarantee more accurate results.
Well, it's getting colder in the shop and it looks like it might snow. So I'm going to switch from the induction forge back over to the propane forge just for a little bit of heat. My cutting edge is going to be a little bit bigger than what my split is, so I want the leading edge of the split to be nice and thinned out so I can blend it in. Otherwise it's going to leave a line that you can never get rid of. Black Bear Forge is sponsored by Combat Abrasives. Use the link in the video description and the coupon code BLACKBEAR10 for a discount on your order.
5160 I used for the cutting edge is an oil hardening steel, so we're going to bring this up to temperature and harden it in oil. Then it's into the little toaster oven for tempering. Well, that does prove the point that you can take a railroad spike and improve it by forge welding in some high carbon steel. We've got a little bit nicer eye than I had on the plain railroad spike axe. We did that by doubling it over and forge welding it back on itself. But honestly, I have to wonder, why would you take the time to do this? To me, a railroad spike knife or a railroad spike axe is simply a novelty item. People buy those and they like those because it's made strictly from a railroad spike. And I really think as soon as you start adding more material to it, it's no longer really a railroad spike. The novelty kind of wears off, but the work increases dramatically. Now, a typical railroad spike axe, when I made those for sale, I was selling them for about $50. I don't actually make them for sale anymore. But this axe probably has closer to $250 worth of work into it. Fair market value is probably more like $100, maybe a hundred and a quarter. So there's no way that I would get my time back out of working on an axe like this. So for me, I don't really see it as worth it. And if I want a nice axe, why not just start with the materials that make a nice axe without so much work? This axe here has just as much work in it. I will get $250 for it, and it's going to be a way better axe when I get it done. So you probably won't see me making any more of these. But there is no doubt this would be a much more functional axe. It's going to hold an edge longer. It's slightly heavier than just a straight railroad spike axe. I really like the way the shape came out. I think it looks good. I think it's an interesting project. But as far as something I would ever go into production making, it's not for me. Now, if you like the idea, you're welcome to do anything you want with it. Take it, run with it, modify it, change it. And if you want to do it just for the fun of it, that's great too. But one way or another, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.